Gibson Stadium to take on Oregon. Matt Leinert and friends. And Bilotti also told me offense has to control the ball, but you can't just control it and not score points. Score points like this. Kellen Clemens, Demetrius Williams, Ducks up 10-0. But the Ducks didn't score enough when they had a chance. Just up 13-0. Missed a couple opportunities. Leinert, Bush, touchdown. And here come the Trojans. Mayday in the third quarter. Trailing 13-10. That Trojan offense gets cranked up. Great protection by the offensive line. Leinert, Jarrett, touchdown again. This is UCLA, USC. All they do is they make Manufactured points. The Trojans are great. Look at this right here. Who are you going to hand it to? Who are you going to call? Reggie Bush. Oh, Look at one shoe. Reggie Bush. It doesn't matter. One shoe. He can still get close to the first down. He blew a shoe and still picking up yardage. And now Bush going to try it to the left. Lou, it doesn't work to the left, so Bush just goes right. He goes right. Gets some great blocks. And even one from the quarterback down here at the bottom. Matt mm -hmm. Leonard. Enables him to win for the score. Unselfish play. Liner blocking. liner has been running. Bush 100. 22 yards rushing. SC scores 45 straight points. Very reminiscent of their last trip to Austin Stadium when they fell behind and ripped off 30 points behind Carson Palmer and won it. 45-13. The Trojans continue to run an offense that looks like some video game gone mad. They'd wind up in the Rose Bowl. Against South Florida in the Big East opener for both teams. Pat Julmas that will end around to Amari Jackson, who hasn't been a big part of Jim Levitt's offense, but he was in this one. Yeah, you see the guy sticking his hand in front of the camera. It was touchdown. 51 yards, 24 to 7 at the half. Opening kickoff in the second half. Cardinals have to get this thing under control. Somebody better tackle Chad Simpson. He logs on and is part of the Gone Network. 94 yards. That was a Pontiac game-changing performance nominee, 31 to 7, and I mean the beatdown was on. Julemus to Jackson again, who ran for two touchdowns and then threw a touchdown pass to Derek Carter. South Florida just hammering Bobby Petrino's Cardinals, 45 to 14. That snapped a streak of 13 straight games in which that high-powered Louisville offense had scored at least 30 points, and it is also a big hit for the Big East. They were counting on Louisville to be their bell cow, their standard bearer to get into the BCS, and not that Louisville can't do that and can't come back. Hokie offense would finally get going here. The tight end, Jeff King, and a touchdown. What's what Virginia Tech has to do, establish a run game, and then go play action to the tight end in a red zone. It's tough to stop. King would make a huge play on special teams. The full rush up the middle gets the big paw, blocks the field goal, the first block this season. D.J. Parker with the scoop and score. Biggest play of the game, Beamer says. Hey, Beamer ball at its finest. 105th block for the Hokies in Beamer's career. King's the guy who was demon in the backboards and hoops against Duke in the big win here. Later, it's 34-7. Reggie Ball, a tough day. Picked off. He didn't see a DB. He takes it to the house. Georgia Tech had a grand total of six first downs. Dominance from that Hokie defense. Gailey said it's the best ACC team he's seen in his tenure there the last four years. Well, they're going to continue to get better, Lee, with the way you see uh, Marcus uh, Vick continuing to improve. They have a great defense, one of the best in the country. They got great defense. They need to improve a little bit on offense to win the big one. Payne's got to come here in November. Today, Miami's home opener against Colorado in front of a pretty sparse crowd. Miami's defense once again shows up. Marcus Maxey with the pick of flat. Well, if you're looking out from another conference, one thing about the ACC, Every single team at the top plays dominating defense, and of course, the Canes, one of the best. Offense, not so much, but Kyle might <laughs> right. would get it going here. Samoris Moss's brother, Santana, big touchdowns on Monday, so Sonoris gets in the act. Wright lost a toenail after he made the throw in the house from us you know plays like this for Kyle Wright are so important to gain confidence for a young quarterback the mistakes piled up for Klatt and the Buffaloes Brandon Merriweather with the pick three turnovers for Colorado 16 penalties and a mixed field well they matched up pretty well Submitted there would be some emotion but did not admit to bitterness in the so proclaimed tie bowl Notre Dame and Washington touchdown Charlie dubbing it the tie bowl tied at three in the second quarter and Darius Walker opens the season with four straight 100 yard rushing games no Notre Dame players ever done that before nine three fighting Irish have the lead Isaiah Stanback flushed out of the pocket 
And this happened to Washington throughout the day. They got down close and made a mistake. Ambrose Wooden with the pick. Notre Dame with a 12-3 lead at the half. Third quarter, here goes Rashawn Powers Neal. Nice job of following these blockers right up there. Just slices right into the end zone. Notre Dame has a great offensive line. Look how they protect Brady Quinn here. They can run block, they can pass block, and they're smart. And Brady Quinn can air it out. And Jeff Samarja can catch it. He's becoming a threat for them. 36-17 Samarja, 164 yards receiving. Never caught a touchdown pass before this year. So that's the final there. Let's take a look now at the Fighting Irish's next. And we get the Boilermakers coming off an emotional game against Minnesota. 17-14, Gary Russell. Oh, Bernard Pollard. <laughs> oh, I just, it's bringing tears to my eyes. What a stick. It's the best form tackle. That was, that was Spielman-esque. It was so good. 28-20, under two minutes to go. Ryan Cupido finding Matt Spade. 28-26, Minnesota trailing. They need the two to tie. Oh, they show him a little option loop. Cupido. And we're going to overtime. Tied at 28 with Corey Sheets out of Bloomfield, Connecticut. Right through the defense, 35-28. Boiler up, boiler up. Minnesota on fourth down, saving themselves. Cupido to Logan Payne. And now we're going to double overtime. Here is Russell again. We keep seeing Russell, but it was really Lawrence Baroni that put the yards on. He's got tired. They tried to run him into cramps. Fourth and two. Last chance for Brandon Pierce. And he cannot hook up with his tight end, Charles Davis. And Minnesota hangs on 42 to 35. Glenn Mason said that he was dreading the postgame talk because they've been so snake bitten by Purdue. He thought he was going to have to explain it again. Instead, the Gophers now go to Penn State with a perfect 4-0 record. Minnesota's side, also Thorne and Barry Alvarez aside since Lloyd Carr has been there. 0-6 against Lloyd Carr. Max Martin puts the ball on the ground. Michael Hart not playing because of the hamstring injury. Wisconsin recovers, and Brian Calhoun, who is brilliant, scores here in the fourth quarter. Terrific vision to take it to the outside. Has enough speed and power to take it in for the six-yard touchdown run. Calhoun putting Sconson up, and then Carr, little trickeration. Flea Flicker, Chad Henney, Mario Manning, and the freshman, Michigan, on top, 20-16. to 16. A minute and a half left in the game. Sconson driving, third and one. Here comes Calhoun one more time. Brian Calhoun getting deep into Wolverine territory, 155 yards rushing. Same drive, under a half minute to go. Quarterback draw? <laughs> Who would have thought it? Well, you know what? Stocko didn't. He said he was surprised by the call. But why wouldn't you let the quarterback run against Michigan? They never accounted for Vince Young. They didn't account for Drew Stanton last year. So Stocko beats him. 23-20, to 20, the final Wisconsin off to a 4-0 start. And now Michigan has to go to Michigan State. They're still undefeated after a scintillating comeback against Northwestern. How about getting it to the freshman, Justin King? How about Justin King and Derek Williams? These two guys giving Penn State speed on the edges. Paterno playing true freshman, something he is not like doing in the past. Penn State would score a couple of plays later. Brett Bazinet, Tyrell Sutton taking it into Penn State territory. Here comes Sutton again. Going to pick up 16 on the option. Would set up a Northwestern field goal. They're up 29-27. Buck 39 to go. Jopa talking to his club. It's fourth and 15 from their own 15. Got to go for it. You're running out of time. You got no chance unless Michael Robinson a dart to Isaac Smolko for the first down. And now under a minute to go. Derek Williams. They called him the number one recruit in the land. It's a game-changing nominee because a true freshman scores his first collegiate touchdown. It's the gamer. Penn State 34-29. Joe Pop pleased with his quarterback. I would say he's pretty good all along. I, I think the two freshman kids are the kids at, at number two and number seven were the guys that got us back in the game. But, but Robinson's a good quarterback. He's, he's a good competitor. He's tough. He can run. He, and he's going to get better as we go along. Any hesitation putting the ball in the hands of those true freshmen in a big game like this? Hey, they're the best you got. What am I going to do? <laughs> My wife couldn't play, so I couldn't put her in. <laughs> <laughs> they are the best he's got. Good move, Joe Pop. Michigan State and Illinois. You know the history for Michigan State. 0-7 in his next game since October of 97 after beating a top-10 team. Drew Stanton didn't want any of that. He finds Kyle Brown early. Sparty on top, 7-0. And Stanton, in fact, would throw a Michigan State record. Five touchdown passes. Spartans roll up 705 yards of offense.
Rhythmic beating on Kentucky after the Cats had taken a 7-0 lead. Urban's team hadn't trailed nine straight games, 39 quarters before that. Chris Lake probably should have gotten flagged crossing the line of scrimmage, but he did throw the touchdown pass to Deshaun Went, who had four touchdowns on the day. That tied it, but wait, there's more. Leak finding Chad Jackson. A nice job by Chad Jackson of lowering his shoulder and getting it in, but Chris Leak is so smart. He doesn't make bad decisions. Look at him right here. They're going to fake the handoff. He's going to stand in the pocket, shuffle up in the pocket straight ahead, and throw the touchdown pass. Dallas Baker there. Gators put a beat down on them, held him to 69 yards in the first half, 49-28 the final. Arkansas and Alabama. Florida goes to Tuscaloosa next week. Tied back in the top 20 under Mike Shula. Thought they had this game in hand after going up 17-3. And then Darren McFadden cutting loose. It says third quarter up there, but this is actually early fourth quarter. McFadden 70 yards against that vaunted tied defense. 17-10. Now 17-13 when Jawan Simpson makes the pick and Alabama has the ball with under six minutes to play. Now Shula had a draw play called on the goal line. Third down, he said that play probably wouldn't have worked, but his senior quarterback, Brody Croyle, saw that D.J. Hall was uncovered. So he threw him a touchdown pass. That's a good idea. I learned from the best. On Mississippi you, State, <laughs> D.J. Shockley, his first road start. He's played a lot. That's sort of one of those semantics type of things. He fakes the handoff to Danny, uh, fakes the handoff and then finds Danny Weir in the end zone all by his lonesome 7-3. And you know what? If anybody ought to use their tight end, it ought to be George. They've got a couple of them and Leonard Pope, he's like 7 5, 900 pounds. They can't tackle him. Look at the big fella oh. gets stretching it in there for the dogs and they hunker down. 23 to 10. Sly Croom's team fought him, but Georgia. His team won in Iowa for the beatdown in Iowa City a year ago. And Troy Smith, very sharp. Anthony Gonzalez, faster than Teddy Ginn? Well, Teddy Ginn and San Antonio Holmes get most of the credit for the offense, but Anthony Gonzalez is the fastest receiver and becoming a go-to guy for him. Pretty good third receiver. Spread option keeper for Troy Smith. Looking like Alex Smith. He had 127 yards rushing. And the Buckeyes used the Alamo Bowl spread offense. That's why they were good today. But Antonio Pittman was the star on the ground. Rushes for 171 yards. They cranked it up. Where were the Iowa? linebacker supposed to be so good. That was the big issue coming in. Could Ohio State run the football against Chad Greenway and Abdul Hodge? They obviously had a big day. And no win is big enough for the Buckeyes after last year. They kept rolling. The defense not pictured here. Held Iowa to negative nine yards rushing on 18 attempts. Look at the turnaround from a year ago. 33-7 Hawks. Today, 31-6 Bucks. Every category total dominance for Ohio State. Oregon State opening Pac-10 play. First quarter, Sun Devils. High-powered offense, over 770 yards against Northwestern. Sam Keller to a wide-open Rudy Burgess. That's the way the Beavers played defense against Louisville last week. <laughs> Very consistent. <laughs> Rudy Burgess then would punch it in. You know, Arizona State had six rushing touchdowns all of last season. They've already exceeded that total this year. Sam Keller later had to leave the game. appeared to be a little nicked up. They were tending to him. Arizona State, Dirk Cutter showing off that big time offense as they gear up for a visit from USC next week and we'll see their offense can stand toe to toe and score point to point with the Trojans. Boston College and Clemson, Tom O'Brien in his first ACC road game and Matt Ryan getting the start for an injured Quentin Porter and Matt probably wished Quentin was in there when David Donham gave him that lick. Ryan, he stayed in the game with yeah, they need uh, better chin straps in their helmet. In overtime, Andre Callender after Clemson had kicked the field goal in its initial possession, gets it to the one, and then Brian told the linebacker and goal line short yardage specialist gets it done for O'Brien, 16 to 13, the final Boston College gets the win. Second straight overtime loss for Clemson. Virginia Tech going to West Virginia next. Did you know that guy, Lou? I know that guy. Great young coach, great young man. What's and, his name? Well, his name's Skip Holtz, and after right. the with the 73, Antonio Lewis catches a punt, gets a great block it, and he goes all the way. 75 yards for the touchdown. The Mountaineers end up winning 20 to 15. Virginia, third quarter, 10 nothing game, third and 24. Marcus Hagans already thrown five interceptions on the season, but no interceptions. It's all about touchdown passes against the Dukies. Tom Santi gets the catch, 46 yards. Hagans, four touchdown passes on the day. A few minutes later on third and 10 from the Duke 12. Hagan's right up there to John Phillips who breaks the plane. UVA rolls 38 to seven is the final. TCU and BYU, this might have been the best finish of the game. TCU trailing 14 nothing. Corey Rogers, Corey Rogers.
He's coastal. He's nationwide. Corey Rogers had a spectacular day. He scored four touchdowns. TCU back in it there. We jumped to overtime, tied at 44. John Beck to Todd Watkins, who's one of the best wide receivers in America. Brigham Young on top, but the PAT attempt. Justin Luter wrote, Luterot can't get it to go through there, and they botch it all up, and the AT's no good. So in TCU's possession, who do you think they ought to go to? Corey Rogers. How about Corey Rogers? He caught nine balls for 137 yards, scored a couple of rushing touchdowns, and the kickoff return you saw, he gets right there and punches it in there. They had to look at that. Oh, that barely broke the plane before that popped out of there. Replays were inconclusive. Those are the Horned Frogs. If you can tow meat leather and put it through, you win it. And Gary Patterson's team.